Hey, how's it going? This is Chris over the 3D Palace, and welcome to the Big Bloody Gun tutorial. Um, <clears throat> four score and many, many years ago, 3D Palace made the minigun tutorial, which is one of our original sets, and it's been popular, and uh, we all dearly loved it, but it's old. And uh, not just a little bit old, it's old, old. So I thought I'd make a new set just to kind of revive it and do some new stuff. And stuff that isn't basically a minigun, but make a weapon. Because it's a good start for a tutorial. Um, we all enjoy making guns and stuff like that. Probably because we all sit behind our desks all day doing very little else. So this is going to give us a chance really to do that. Now, I'm using 3DS Max 9 because I can. Um, there's no reason you can't follow this along in 3D Studio Max 8 or 7, although I might be using the new Boolean tools. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably decide on the fly, though. OK, so, first things first. Um, first of all, name and colour here. I'm going to click on the colour box, and I'm going to assign it a lovely grey, and turn off assign random colours. That way I can now create stuff, and they'll all be like this. Yeah? OK. Another thing I should probably do is kick up my... Uh, key view. I'll just dig that out. Where the heck have I put it? I think that's it. I'll just give it a check. Yep, there it is there. Okay, so now I can start. Now, the first piece, and I'm not working a scale at the minute. I can scale it down later. Should I so please? I'm going to start with a foot. And in the old tutorial, these were round for the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? For the minigun. This one, they're not going to be round, though. More like little wedges, really. Now, when I've made this box, I'm going to hit F4, just so I can get these edges visible here. Then I'm going to right-click, go to Edible Poly. Now, if I'm going a bit fast, just pause it, OK? And uh, I'm going to select this rear one here and just pull it out just a tiny bit, like that. OK, that's working out OK for me. Now, select this inside poly here, and I'm going to insert it. And if I select this vert and this vert, on the y-axis, I'm just going to scale those in. You see that's just straighten those two. Now I can scale them this way. And if you look, I'm getting this kind of shape going on here now. OK. This is going to give us some stuff to work from in a few. Now over here, there to there, I'm going to do a secondary connect. There we go, see? So I just click connect, and those two are linked together. And now if I use the chamfer on it, like so, and some target welds. This tutorial might be a little bit longer than the minigun, by the way, so if it is, I apologise. I think my trackballs are need to clean as well. OK, there we go. See, it's starting to come together. Now, all the way through the middle here, I'm going to do another connect. And I grab this polygon here and this one here. I'm going to extrude them straight up like that. OK, that's fine. Now, what I need to do here is just take off these lines. So I'm just going to backspace them. And then I'm going to get rid of these verts here and here. <coughs> Reason being, I want to do another connect just in the middle here, and I want to make sure it's going to be exactly in the middle. There we go. Now, get rid of this polygon here. And I'm going to do a hinge from edge. And that's going to be 180 degrees. And um, for segments, let's say 8, click OK, delete that one off. Now, control select by uh, vertex, control A, and then I'm just going to weld everything together. There we go. And now that part there is about right. Now, what I want to do now, because it's a little bit big, is just select my polygon, and I'm just going to reduce it in size a bit under my left hand viewport and just get it flush with the top and just change my viewing angle this time change it to front there we are if 
here and bring it back a bit. There we go. Okay, let's draw it back into perspective, and now you can see what we've been doing, and we've got this rather nice shape coming together here. Now, <coughs> pardon me, what I need to do now is kind of drive a hole inside it. So I'm going to get a cylinder, and I'm going to use auto grid, and just take it from this kind of point just here, and uh, really need to kind of get this lined up as best as I can, and just pull it out like so. Now I'm going to change my height segments to 1 and I think I'll take my sides down to about 16. I'm going to increase my height and then just use the move tool, drag it through there, convert to edible poly, select this part. Now I should probably name this so I'm going to call it the tripod foot 01. Okay and just going to go over here and change standard primitives to compound. Now we've got pro boolean down the end here so what I'm going to do is start picking. Pick this one and as you see it's now cut a lovely big hole all the way through my model and it's actually lined some of the verts up surprisingly. Okay so we should be able to uh, basically just start cleaning this model up pretty much immediately. So, convert to edible poly. I like pro boolean because it uh, actually doesn't bugger your model up quite as much as the other ones do. I can now use the cut tool. Incidentally, you can't use pro boolean unless you have the subscription version of 3ds Max, I'm afraid. If you don't have Max 9. If you've got Max 9, you're fine. You know, help yourself. There we are. Just running my cuts through. By the way, this isn't a low polygon gun. If you want to make a low polygon variant, knock yourself out. You can tell it's not low polygon when we're just dicking around with the foot, to be quite honest there. <coughs> okay. You notice how everything's starting to come together now. At least I hope they do. It's been a while since I've done a nice gun modelling bit. I must have better do quite enjoy them. There we are. I'm not really that interested in uh, contemporary guns, but uh, I do quite like the old fancy sci-fi jobbies. Mainly because they're interesting they always tend to be an interesting shape. Okay, so that part's just about coming together. And let's do some reduction on the top just to lower the height a bit. There we are. Okay, and I'm gonna go into my chamfer mode I think. Just loop there and holding down control by the way. Try and loop there and fail. I could use poly boost, but uh, as I know a lot of you guys won't have poly boost, and as this is headed for the free tutorial area, probably not the greatest idea because I'll get loads of people going, What's poly boost? and then I'll get a load of other people going. Plus post key gen, which isn't good because the Polyboost guys worked bloody hard on their product. I mean, I saw it used once and I just went out and bought it straight away because it's that good. And frankly, if you're going to make a career in 3D, you should really buy the tools you're going to use because it's just setting yourself a bad example if you're going to start with a load of basically, uh pirated stuff. You get a lot more value out of something if you're actually going to pay for it. I can see some extra verts there that I'm going to need cleaning out. And there. Just 
being careful what I'm selecting there. Or at least trying to be. Okay, and here. Okay, now I'm going to go and do it the other way. And I'm aware it's a long process, but uh, it's the way we do stuff. You want to set your chamfers up carefully and properly every time. Once I've done all my selecting, by the way, I'm going to go back and remove the verts that we don't need. Because I can see them. Well, I know where they are anyway. Okay, so selection set. Cell set 1. And this is edges. Okay, that means I can come back to them in just a minute. Now, down here, let's get rid of these extroverts. So all I'm doing is just selecting them and backspacing them. There's another one. You can see these ones over here as well, so we don't even have to rotate around our model. There we go. Now, back over here again. And dig out cell set edges. Now, there may be a couple of misselections now that we've uh, taken out some of our verts, so it's worth going and having a quick correct. You should always spin around your model a couple of times anyway. Turn off ignore back facing. We really don't want these inside ones here selected, for example. Okay. Okay, now to this side. Checking it all over and down here. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, chamfers really are important when it comes to render time. So, let me just quickly show you. Uh, if I hit F9, I'll just drag over my render window there. You can see that's what we look like without any chamfers. Yeah, sharp edges. Now if I do a chamfer, and I'm going to change this to about 0.25 for my own chamfers here, and then open up my render, and hit F9. You'll see the difference now in the way the light kind of hits the sides, okay? It's only a minor thing, but it's quite important. Okay. So believe it or not, we've spent 13 minutes now, and we've only just finished making the foot. However, I think you'll agree a foot is an important part of this. I also think that some of our verts don't seem to be connected to each other, so... Let's make sure we do a quick weld, and then go back. Okay, a quick chamfer. I think I'll reduce this down to 0 0.15 actually. There we are. Also, if we look, I'll take that one off. There's no point having more lines than we need. Okay, that's fine. Click OK. Got a heavy look to it as well, which I like. Right then. Now, inside here, which is a 16 sided, um, well, basically a 16 sided cylinder. I'm now going to create another cylinder, so standard primitive cylinder and just a 
case of kind of getting this lined up in the right area. Sometimes I just cheat and use my gizmos. And most of the time you'll find they do a fair old job. There we go. Now if I go to the move tool, zoom in a bit, and just kind of uh, do some minor tweaks to this. Slowly increase the radius until I've got the one I want. There we go. And then drop into perspective. Now you may notice that I'm using left for front view. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm using left for front view and I'm using front for left view. Uh, this is because it's a tripod and so this is actually technically the left tripod leg. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm certainly not going to get overly excited about it. Okay, now what I've done is I've positioned this cylinder in here. I'm going to convert it to an edible poly and this is going to become our tripod leg 01. Okay, so now we've got our foot and our leg. Okay, so we're 16 minutes in. I'm going to call this one to a close and we'll start the next tutorial. So I'll see you in the next set.